Hello geometers, welcome to our third day of chapter 8, which is showing that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So in the past, in section 2, we used the properties of parallelograms to find missing side and angle measures. Now we're going to determine if a parallelogram is a figure, so that's a yes or no, and we're also going to prove that a parallelogram is a figure. So the first thing that we should probably talk about is the ways to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. This is also going to help us determine if a figure is a parallelogram. The first few are properties that we already know. Well, a parallelogram just means that the opposite sides are parallel. So the first way to prove is that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. And then thinking about the other properties we learned, we learned that the opposite sides are congruent. So all this is telling us is if we have a quadrilateral and the opposite sides are congruent, that quadrilateral has to be a parallelogram. Um, besides the opposite sides being congruent, we also know that the opposite angles are congruent. And there's two more properties that we should know. Along with angles, the opposite angles are congruent. The consecutive angles, the ones next to each other, hopefully you remember are supplementary. So all of these are pretty straightforward. Five is a little bit trickier because it's not something we talked a whole lot about. But there's an important property of the diagonals of a parallelogram. That important property is that the diagonals bisect each other. So how that's going to look, if you have a figure, the diagonals are going to be drawn in. If they bisect each other, then this diagonal is going to be bisected. And this one is also going to be bisected. So the two parts of each diagonal should be congruent. And then the last way to prove is one that's new. If you have one pair of sides and that pair, the sides are both parallel and congruent. So again, if we draw ourselves a figure, one pair of sides that are parallel, that same pair of sides that are congruent. This would be a parallelogram. As soon as one of these ways is true, all the rest have to be true also, because these are properties of a parallelogram. So the first way that we are going to see these, these properties applied is it's going to say, find the values of x that will make the figures parallelograms. So in figure number one, x can be almost anything that it wants. It can be 5, it could be 10, um, but we want the specific value of x that will make this figure a parallelogram. As you notice, the two x expressions are both on the diagonal. So this is going to correspond to property 5, the diagonals bisect each other. We notice our first diagonal is already bisected because of the tick marks. We need our second diagonal to be bisected as well. It's going to be bisected if the two parts are congruent. So I'm going to do 3x minus 11 equals x plus 5. If I subtract x, I get 2x minus 11 equals 5. Adding 11, I get 2x equals 16, so x equals 8. And the way I used is that diagonals bisect each other. Right now, I would like you to pause the video and try example two on your own, please. Make sure you look at those six ways above and determine which one it is. Opposite sides congruent, it obviously is not that one because we have two angles. So pause the video, try it on your own, come back when you're finished, please. Okay. 
Okay, let's see how we did. Now, we have two angles, so we're e either we're using way 3 or way 4. Either the opposite angles are congruent or the consecutive angles are supplementary. Well, the two angles we have are not opposite from each other. They're consecutive. So we're going to add them and set them equal to 180 because they're supplementary. So I have x plus 1, add 5x minus 7 equals 180. Combining like terms, x and 5x is 6x. 1 and negative 7 is negative 6. If I add 6, I get 6x equals 186. Dividing by 6, I get x equals 31. And the way I used is that consecutive angles are supplementary. So hopefully you got that one right. If not, hopefully your setup was right, you made a slight mistake, or even if your setup was right, hopefully you now see how to approach the problem. Um, regardless of whether or not you got it right, we have one more example to do on the next page of this same type before moving on. Okay, so example three, we have three different expressions with x. And we need to find x, so you're going to need to set up an equation. I would like you to try this one on your own. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. The first thing I notice is that we have opposite angles. Opposite angles should be congruent in a parallelogram, so I'm going to set those equal. If I add 6, I get 22x plus 12 equals 24x. Subtracting 22x, I get 12 equals 2x, and x equals 6. So that was using that opposite uh, angles are congruent. That's not the only way to approach the problem. We also know something about the consecutive angles. Well, we know the consecutive angles are supplementary. So we also could have done 22x plus 6 plus 7x equals 180. This gives me 29x equals 174. Dividing by 29, I get x equals 6. And that was using the fact that consecutive angles are supplementary. So this is a problem where there's more than one way to approach the problem. But any way that you should did it, or that you should have done it, you should have gotten 6. You also could have used these consecutive angles, and you still would have gotten 6. So that's the first type of problem that we're going to see. The second type of problem, like examples 4 through 6, is going to say determine if the figures are parallelograms. Yes, they are. No, they are not. So looking at example 4, what do I know? I know that I have one pair of sides that are parallel. I have another pair of sides that are parallel. So this goes along with property number one. Both pairs of sides are parallel. So we're going to say, yes, this is a parallelogram. Because both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Okay, let's look at example five. Example five, we have one pair of sides congruent, and we have one diagonal that is bisected. This would be a parallelogram if both pairs of sides were congruent, but we don't know that, or if both diagonals were, were bisected, but we also don't know that either. So we say, no, this is not a parallelogram. Okay, example six is a little trickier. I would like you to try this one on your own, please. Noticing that we have two angles that are congruent. That's going to help you somehow. So pause the video. Take a, f you know, a minute or two to think about whether or not this is a parallelogram, and then come back when you are finished, please.
Okay, let's see how we did. What you're going to notice about those angles I highlighted is that they form a Z. So we have a Z with congruent angles in the Z. That means these lines are parallel. So right now, I have a pair of sides that are parallel, and I have a pair of sides that are congruent. This looks kind of similar to a way to prove number six that says one pair of sides, opposite sides is parallel and congruent. But here, it's not the same pair of sides. So we would say, no, not a parallelogram. You have to have one pair of sides that's both parallel and congruent. Both have to be true for the same pair of sides. If it was true for the same pair of sides, then it would be a parallelogram. Two different sides, not a parallelogram. So that one was tricky, like I said. Hopefully it went well. If not, that's okay. Um, hopefully we learned something. We have a few more examples to go, so if you could flip the page, please. Okay, so number seven says, show that ABCD is a parallelogram, and it gives um, four coordinates. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to graph those coordinates. So um, please do that right now. Okay, so here's what I got. Hopefully you got the same thing. Now, there's six different ways to prove that uh, ABCD is a parallelogram, and we have them on the first page of notes. We're just going to go with the first way, uh, definition of a parallelogram. Definition of a parallelogram is that opposite sides are parallel. So we're going to see, are the opposite sides here parallel? How, would, how are we going to determine if sides are parallel? Well, we're going to use slope. Hopefully we remember that parallel lines have the same slope. So I want to know, is AB parallel to CD? That's one pair of sides. And then I want to know, is BC parallel to AD? That's the other pair of sides. So I have four slopes that I have to calculate. Hopefully you remember the slope formula. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's do AB first. Slope, the symbol is m. So the slope of AB is going to be y minus y. So I'm going to do 3 subtract 7. And then negative 2 subtract negative 5. Okay, if you do the other order, 7 minus 3 and negative 5 subtract negative 2, that works also. We just have to be consistent. So 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Negative 2 subtract negative 5, that's like adding a 5, is 3. So this is the slope of AB. Now I need to find the slope of CD. Again, y minus y, so I'm going to do 6 subtract 2. x minus x, 3 subtract 6. This is 4 over negative 3. Okay. Our two slopes look the same. Um, the negatives, one's in the numerator, one's in the denominator. That's okay. These are still the same number. So we're going to say that AB is parallel to CD. Okay, so that was one pair of sides, and we could mark that. AB is parallel to CD. I would like you to do the other pair of sides. Find the slopes of BC and AD, and determine if ABCD is a parallelogram. So pause the video and come back when you're finished, please. Okay, let's see how we did. So first you should have found the slope of BC. It's going to be 7 minus 6 over negative 5 subtract 3. 
So this is going to be 1 over negative 8. Then you should have found the slope of AD. So 3 minus 2 for negative 2 subtract 6, which is 1 over negative 8. So two slopes are the same, so my lines are parallel. B, I'm sorry, BC is parallel to AD. Okay, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, so yes, this is a parallelogram. I'm going to say that ABCD is a parallelogram. Because both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. It's extremely important that you write me an answer telling me what your work actually means. So I know that you were checking for parallel sides. So hopefully that one went well. If you didn't write a sentence, that's okay. Um, now you know that you need to. We have one more example. It says, is the figure a parallelogram? Explain. Um, and it also says, be careful. So this is the problem that I'm going to be checking when you come to class tomorrow. If you have nothing written, you will not get credit for the notes. So please put forth an effort. Look at the first uh, six ways to show that a par parallelogram, that a figure is a parallelogram, and see if any of those ways apply.